Hey guys, welcome to the final part of this Beyond Behaviours series, part 3, where we'll be implementing a nested relationship. Now everything that we've used so far is available on GitHub. You can find it at this link here. It'll be available in the video description and also the tutorial link. So you can download this plugin and have a look at everything that we've done so far. Now the plugin comes with several models that we can see here. We've got a customer model and it's sort of like a shop setup. So you've got a customer that has an order and the order has items and the item belongs to a product. So it's pretty straightforward. And on the front end, or sorry, on the back end, you can actually see what that looks like here by navigating to the formist menu item. And you can see the customer list being displayed here. And when we open a customer, you can see that the customer has orders. But here's the interesting part. When we open an order, you can see that the items form field has a message that says, sorry, this is as far as behaviors can go. And that's true. If we look at the controller here, this relation controller behavior, it doesn't support nesting. So it can't go two levels deep, a bit like inception. So you can't have a customer that has an order that has order items. It's simply too much for the controller, the relation controller to manage. So we need to use our MVC skills to overcome this limitation and implement our own custom solution. And so if we have a look here at the models item, oh sorry, the order form fields, you can see it's rendering the items form field as a type of partial and it's looking at the path field items. So we can find this here in the customer's view directory called field items. And there's the message that we can see on the website at the moment saying this is, this is as far as behaviors can go. So what we'll do is we'll put some new markup in here. And what this will do is it'll display an item list, which again is another partial displaying passing through the items as a variable. And we've also got a button here that says add item. And this add item button makes a reference to the Ajax handler called on load create item form. And it also makes a reference to a data control pop-up. So that just means that when we open this, when we click this add item button, it's going to launch a pop-up and it's going to call the on load create item form Ajax handler. But before we do any of that, we should first overcome the problem here that the item list partial doesn't exist. So let's go and create that. We'll create a new file here and we'll call it underscore item underscore list. So that's the item list partial. And we'll paste in this content here. So what this does is it basically displays a table and it's showing a list of items. So if we find that there are items, if we count items, then spin over those items and just display them in a table. So the markup that I've used here, that's available in the documentation via backend user interface guide. So this is sort of a manual um, hard coded version of a list widget. We could use a list widget here, but just for the demonstration, I'm just going to keep things simple and just use the raw markup. You can also see here that there's a remove button so we can remove items from the list, but we'll go into a bit more detail on that a little bit later. But for now, we can save this and actually have a look at what we've got so far. So if we cancel this pop-up and open it again, you can see we now have a list of items and that's driven by the markup that we've just created. But what happens if we click this add item button? It's going to display an error saying that the handler isn't found. So we should go and create that as well. We'll return to the controller and this will be the first handler that we add. Now, as you can see here, the handler looks for an item form widget. So we still need to create that, but it's going to be stored locally in the controller object so we can access it from anywhere. It also passes through the order ID. Now this is taken from the relation controller when we open the pop-up initially. And we know that that's called manage ID by inspecting the source code. This will allow us to bind the new order item to the existing order that we have open. And finally, it's going to render a partial called item create form. So we'll need to create that too. So we'll create the new partial and we'll call it underscore item underscore create underscore form dot htm. And I'm just going to paste in the pop-up contents here. Now, the first thing you should notice here is the hidden input. It's passing through a name called manage ID 
and that's going to be dedicated for the order ID, the parent order. So when we create this order item, we know to associate it to this order ID. And it's very important that this identifier persists across everything that we're doing, so we have that relationship that we can create. The next thing you should notice is the item form widget here. This is being passed from our controller in the vase, and it's calling render on the widget, so that's where our form's going to be displayed. And then finally, there's this create button here called on create item. So that's firing an Ajax handler as well, and we'll have to create that in our controller. Now the one thing you should notice is that the item form widget is currently set to null. So we need to create an instance of a form widget and associate it to that property of the controller class. So let's go and do that. So here I'm just going to define a helper method, and this method's going to be called create order item form widget. And so this will just create a form widget for us. And there should be a few new configuration items that you can see here. The first one called alias and the second one array name. Now the reason we're using these configuration items is because we already have a form widget associated to our page. So to prevent collisions with this form widget, we need to include these unique identifiers to make sure that the two don't bump into each other. Although it's unlikely because they're in different forms. But it's just good practice to follow this anyway. Alright, so now that we have the helper that just returns the widget after binding it to the controller, we should specify in the constructor that this item form widget should be equal to an instance of our widget. So now anytime an action fires, anytime an Ajax handler fires, this item form widget is going to be populated with an instance of our form widget that we've created here. So at this point, we should be good to go. So let's have a look. If we click Add Item, yep, you can see that it's created a new form for us. And because we've bound the form to the controller, this record finder here, this works as well. So it's uh, created a knock-on effect where we now have almost four levels of form fields going on here, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if we click Create, we'll now see that the on create Item handler doesn't exist. So let's go and create that. Alright, so here's where we're going to get our hands pretty dirty. So I'm about to introduce three new methods here. So I'll just, um, I'll just collapse the ones that we've got so far, and then I'll just show these new methods. Alright, so the first one is the onCreateItemHandler, and what that's going to do is it's going to look at our item form widget that we just created, and it's going to ask for the save data. This is similar to saying, you know, give me the post data. But because we defined an array item when we create the widget, array name here, we'll need to actually use post as the array called item. But it's just easier just to say, give me the save data directly from the widget using this get save data method. All right, so then we're going to create a new model um, of the order item. We're going to fill that model and then save it. Then we're going to call this helper method called get order model. And so what this does is, it looks at the manage ID that we've posted through our create form here, this hidden manage ID, and it's going to look up the order by that ID if it's present in the request. Otherwise, it's just going to return a new instance of an order. And so now that this get order model has returned us a new order, we're going to look at the relationship called items. So the order items, we're going to add our new model, which is the order item that we just created and then we're going to refresh the order item list. And so this refers to another helper, which essentially looks up the order model, looks at the items, includes any deferred bindings. So when, we, when we're calling this get session key here, we're actually adding it to the items using deferred binding. So we want to say with deferred, um, so include any deferred items, and then return the results. So you can find more about deferred binding in the documentation uh, under the database models section. Uh, I think it's right down the bottom actually. And so once we've got the items, we're going to pass it to the page variables called items, and then we're going to push a partial update to the item list div. And that's located here in the field items. You can see that div here that says div ID item list. So we're going to push an update to that div, and we're going to re render this item list partial containing the new items that we've just looked up. So that's pretty straightforward. Now if we go back to our page 
and click create again you can see it's now created the new item associated it to that order and then updated the item list pretty cool huh so now let's look at this remove button here so if we go back to the markup with the item list here's the remove button the markup for the remove button you can see it's calling an Ajax handler called on delete item and it's also passing the record ID as request data so we should go and define this Ajax handler in our controller and we'll put it just below the on create item handler and so here's the logic that we'll put inside which essentially looks up the record ID that was passed from the button and finds the order item looks up the order model uh, removes it from the collection of items using deferred binding and then refreshes the order item list so you can see here it's basically the same thing as creating an item just in reverse so instead of adding we're going to remove so now when we go back to the back end and we click this remove button it can remove the items so we can update this and there we go we've just created a nested relationship inside a relation controller so let's wrap up what we've done here we've essentially taken the standard relation controller behaviors and extended it to use our own functionality by creating our own Ajax handlers and implementing our own form widgets so we've taken all of the things that we've learned so far and built a realistic example there are many ways we could have approached this for example, in the field items here, we could have used a list widget, but instead we just used basic HTML to get the same results. So really the possibilities are endless on how you want to implement your functionality. You're not bound by these behaviors here by any means, and uh, hopefully you found this useful, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next screencast. Take care and goodbye.